more communities celebrate Cultural Day. Federal government to employ additional aid workers to improve humanitarian response team. Three ministers, four governors disqualified in Democratic Republic of Congo election over fraud and violence. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let us give him maximum support for the task ahead. Details of the news, I am Priska Wanko. Governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Saludo, says his administration will sign executive order next week to stop sand mining in Oko. Governor Saludo will make this known during the commissioning of Dr. Alex Okwema Civic Center. Reveal that his government will form a tax force comprising representatives from the five villages of the community to commence enforcement and seize any articulated vehicle that will flout the other. Government House correspondent A.G. Kabana tells us more. Governor Soludo revealed that his government will form a task force comprising representatives from the five villages of the community to commence enforcement and seize any articulated vehicle that will flout the order. According to the governor, erosion is a huge existential threat to Oko as he predicted that if the challenge progresses unhindered, Oko community will cease to exist in the next five or six decades. While recommending the public-private community partnership PPCP development approach as the way forward the governor pointed out that one of the roles that is expected of the community members is to start preventing running water from leaving their compounds onto the roads. Governor Saludo, who highlighted a number of projects built by private individuals and communities, which he commissioned this period, noted that Dr. Kweme was not the richest when he started to rebuild Oko, calling for revival of the community spirit. He recalled that there was Convocational College, a project he described as an unfinished project after Dr. Alex Kweme's heart, and called for its completion, just as he assured that this year, work will begin on the Powell Brewery Road in memory of the former vice president. President, who he said lived a life of impact. The governor also recalled their days in the Ukwame movement in 1980 because they believed in his ideals and ideas and stated that since he passed on, Oko, Nigeria, and the world has not remained the same, adding that Dr. Ukwame still deserves more honor by the federal government. <laughs> After from next week, I get seized the motor for one year. Then I always prosecute one year. Our target, would have, by the time I spend the four years here, we would have on many sectors, many sectors, be it in area of infrastructure, be it in health, be it in education, be it in other uh, aspects of uh, development, we would have been able to deliver more than what many governments could not do in eight years. That's our target, and we are on course to deliver on that. Earlier, the President General of Oko Chief Luke Mweke commended Governor Saludo for his development efforts in the community and called his attention to some of the needs that are yearning for attention of the government. It is a thing of joy that the Oko community has completed this edifice to honor our great son, Chief Dr. Alex Fai Chuku Ekweme, GCON. The first vice president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Iloko Idagwa Tanorumba. The former chairman of Police Service Commission, Chief Simon Okeke, the national vice president of Hanez Ndibo Worldwide, Chief Damian Okeko Gene, the traditional ruler of Oko, Professor Laz Ekweme, among other notable sons and daughters of Oko community and beyond, attended the event, which featured unveiling of the building and Dr. Alex Ekweme's statue. AGK Abana, ABS News. 
Governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Saludo, has received Nigeria's Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Christopher Musa, on a concert call at the Governor's Lodge, Amobia. Welcoming his guest, Governor Saludo commended the partnership and support of the Nigerian Armed Forces in the fight against insurgency in Anambra. AGK Abana again has the details. <laughs> The governor commended the DSS, the Navy, Air Force, Civil Defense, and the State Vigilante Service for their fighting spirit in the fight he noted is being won. Governor Saludo made reference to Obo community, which used to house three or four criminals camps when his administration came into office, pointing out that there was mass return in the community this festive season. He described the social visit of the chief of defense staff to the state as demonstrative of the people-centric disposition of the army and requested for more people and material support by the army. The cooperation partnership and support of the Nigerian armed forces, armed forces, and the police, the DSS, the army, the navy, uh, even the air force, the civil defense, in a fight against insurgency here in Adam. It's, um, as the governor said when I arrived here, the local governments were totally uh, under siege. Thanks to the armed forces and our own vigilantes as well, collaborating with them. And I uh, thank you immensely. It's been quite um, a ferocious war, uh, if I may put it that way. But it is one that we are winning. I think it is. Earlier, General Musa, who is the 18th Chief of Defense Staff of the country, praised Governor Soludo for his giant stride during his days as Central Bank Governor and revealed that due to his leadership prowess, Anambra is peaceful and calm, assuring that the armed force is suddenly behind him. General Musa expressed optimism that under Governor Soludo's watch, Anambra will go to greater heights, adding that his visit to the state is part of civil military relationship and a way of drawing the citizen closer to them, stressing the importance of maintaining that relationship because, according to him, the military exists for the people. Well, we confess to pay a courtesy visit to you, to say a very big thank you, to also tell you that we're here on your land um, to conduct a few uh, activities within your general area. We deem it fit that we we'll this here will be homage and to appreciate what you are doing to all the members of the armed forces. We know how you have supported us and how you have continued to support us. We will say a very big thank you. I want to assure you that the armed forces of Nigeria we are solidly behind you. We want Anambra to be safe and secure so that it can continue to do And I know with you, it will go to greater heights. Uh, congratulations, sir. Secretary to the State Government, Professor Solo Chukulo Bello. Chief of Staff to the Governor, Mr. Ernest Ezadre. Special Advisor to the Governor on Security, Air Vice Marshal Ben Chuobi. Press Secretary to Governor, Mr. Christian Aburime. And senior officers from the Defense Portals, we are also present at the event. Tipman Peace Committee has been inaugurated to ensure sustainable peace and progress in Mbauku community, Oka South local government area. Government House correspondent Emmanuel Okonkwo reports that members of the committee were selected from the five villages that make up Mbuku community who were inaugurated at the office of the Deputy Governor at Government House, Oka. We have details of those reports from here. Inaugurating the committee, Deputy Governor Ibezim thanked the members for making themselves available to serve their community to ensure that peace and love and that the community moves forward, encouraging them to be focused in carrying out the task given to them. Dr. Ibezim asked the members of the committee to be guided by equity, justice and fairness and use the opportunity given to them to write their names in gold through quality services and commitment to truthfulness and peace-mindedness. The Deputy Governor explained that the committee is charged with the responsibilities of ensuring that court cases are withdrawn, concern of the community looked into and amended, and new sharing formula in the town implemented, as generally agreed during the recent general meeting held at the Civic Center. You the knowledge 
that are in this team, we can look, look critically into some gray areas. Very importantly, you should also look at what the state has for the running of the family. Look at them so that we wouldn't be running parallel to what the state. In a speech, the chairman of the committee, Barrister Obadia Obala, on behalf of others, appreciated the deputy governor for trusting them with such a task and promised to do their best to deliver on specification and beyond the expectations of the people. This is a restoration because our community and who are having a kind of ups and down. For this uh, inauguration, we make us watch and to get this The grand celebration of Amoka Day 2024 was a time for indigents of the town to reflect on their heritage, honor their traditions, and celebrate the values that bind them together as a community. The celebration which took place at Community Primary School Field, Amoka, Ihiala, local government area, of Anambra State with the theme, United for Development, drew people of timber and caliber from Amoka town and across the state, including the traditional ruler of Amoka, Iwe Ken, Ubi Limwe. The member representing Ihiala One constituency in Anambra State House of Assembly, Honorable Jude Dungobili, a stakeholder in Amoka, Mr. Chinedu, AZ Diego, Executive Secretary, Anambra State Judicial Service Commission, Barrister Stanley Mbanaso, and others. The reports. Amwaka in Ihiala local government area is a border town that shares common boundaries with Mbidi, Ozala, and Ohabo, all in Imo State. The member representing Ihiala one constituency, Honorable Jude Ngobili, said Amoka is a big town, hence the need for them to key into programs of the state government, embrace public-private partnership, and fund cooperatives to access funding from the government, adding that programs beneficial to the Dantrudin will be packaged to aid development of Amoka town. We want to package programs that will be beneficial to the downtrodden and that will lead to the development of the town. Welcoming the people, the traditional ruler of the town, Igwe Ken Obirolembe, noted that Amoka Day was a day set aside for the indigents of the town to celebrate their existence and discuss issues concerning them, expressed gratitude to God for bringing his subjects home safely and the blessing bestowed upon them. Like you see this Amoka community, now we have the last community boundary in Anambra State. Yeah. Government in our tribe on Amoka. Because I'm a poor request and I live up here. Consider The President General of Amoka United Union, Dickin Emmanuel Okungwa, said Amoka Day celebration was a testament to the strength and unity that binds them as a community, stressed that it is their responsibility to honor their legacy by preserving their traditions and passing them to future generations, used the opportunity to take the ABS round some of the projects backed upon by his administration to include Mpwa Amoka Yam Market, fenced and installation of gate at the town's civic center and ongoing construction of drainage along the university road to make the road passable, especially during rainy season, and pleaded with the state government to construct the university road that led to Anambra State University Uli to fasten development of the town. university. <laughs> In their separate interviews, the Executive Secretary, Anambra State Judicial Service Commission, Barrister Stanley Mbanaso, said his community is celebrating the unity they acquired recently through the assistance of Governor Chukuma Soludo and Commissioner for Local Government, Chieftaincy and Community Affairs, Honorable Tony Collins Mwabonwane, expects that the peace will be sustained to enable the government to address infrastructural challenges in the community. While the chairman on the occasion, Mr. Chinedu Ezidigwe, who pointed out that it was the first time they are celebrating Amokade after some years of misunderstanding in the town, 
implored the leadership of the town to tolerate and carry everybody along for a sustainable peace and development. Nzechi Debele DK Ejejemba and an elder from Omoabara Amoka, Mr. Benjamin Uzoma, expressed joy for the unprecedented return of their children, praised the leadership of the town, cutting off unity cake and different masquerades, entertained the people during the event. Ogochuku Oran for ABS News. The need to uphold and inculcate culture and tradition into the younger generation has been demonstrated by the people of Umudora, Obalu, Huana, when they gathered in their numbers at AZNM Century School Field, Umudora, for the biannual cultural carnival. Esther Aswanya has the details. The cultural carnival, which is celebrated every two years, attracted people of Umodara, Waluku, and Namboom from different parts of the country with the aim of rekindling their culture and tradition to their young ones to avoid it going into extinction. The event, which attracted people from their neighboring villages with their masquerades and cultural dances, the villages which include Nzam, Oromeititi, Momo, among others, the elders of Umodara, Waluku, and Nam community, Ndio Tuodru, Ndiada, among others, we are not left out as they trooped out in their traditional regalia with their cultural display to entertain the people. Speaking, the traditional ruler of Umodora, Opalupu Anam, Igwe Moji Onyeka said, the event is a period of merrymaking where they gather to cherish their rich cultural heritage, saying that it unites them together, brings peace and reconciliation among them. He noted that their greatest joy during the event is seeing their children participate actively in some of their culture, which gives them hope of its sustenance. The first vice president, Umudora Balufuanam, Mr. Sabinus Chukwemeka, said that the carnival, which comes every two years, is a special event for them, as majority of their sons and daughters comes home just to be part of the event. He expressed joy at the outcome of the event in their community and called on the state government to come and assist them develop some of their tourist attractions like Anam Beach as well as Access Road and Electricity. Two years, I even did Mudora Anam, I am a Wakaneva, but I'm doing this year, see where Batona. The chairman planning committee Mudora Cultural Carnival, Mr. Okechupokeke, thank God for the success of the event. He noted that the carnival is a period they gather as one indivisible entity to rejoice and cherish their culture, as well as give their children opportunity to witness the culture that makes them great. And the dividends of the culture, like two days, three days ago, I'm well, I'm a Liverpool Anamo Beach. If I am not within Anambara, within South East, then we will get the Kabish. But I am at the beach. People are very surprised. Then we will be now. Brothers from Lagos or other states came to the beach. So government is here. Nyela Nyaka. I am here. Or is unique more than a two or today? The youth president Mudoro Popalufu Anam. Mr. Vincent Iwanugo said, it is a special year for them as it's a period they display their culture and thank the people of Umudora, Papaluku Anam, for the zeal and determination to sustain their culture for the future generations. The event featured display of different types of masquerades, cultural dance by Indio to Odo, Odinana display, among others. Esther Asanya, ABS News. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation has announced plans to employ additional aid workers to improve humanitarian response time. The Ministry said the employment would be on a temporary basis as part of the federal government's commitment to reduce unemployment in the country. According to research, Nigeria tops the list of countries with the highest rate of unemployment. The need to uphold and inculcate culture and tradition into the younger generation has been demonstrated by the people of Umudora Balukwanam when they gathered in their numbers at AZNM Central School Field, Umudora, for the biannual cultural carnival. Esther Asanya has the details. Umunta Royal Family, according to the organizers of the event, is a small community in Aguleri that produces the king. The glamorous event which took place at Ama Omonta Royal Family Square with the illustrious sons and daughters of the family 
and their in-laws both at home and in diaspora in attendance provided another opportunity for social interaction and bonding among the royal family. The cardinal message during the event was for everybody to imbibe a think-home philosophy. Speaking during the event, the chairman on the occasion, Chief Udanye Nubu, says the event which holds every 30th December annually was aimed at preserving their culture and to honor their illustrious sons called on youth to imbibe the spirit of peaceful coexistence, prayed for Johnny Messis on all their guests. The organizing secretary, Omonta Cultural Carnival, Mr. Dominic Okabwe, enumerated the essence of the event as a way of reviving their rich culture as prince and princesses in Enugu Aguilari and to promote community development in line with Governor Saludo's led administration and to inculcate the values in their young ones. Makas na oyera po omena na ni aufu. Unu na yuna fu ekike di shiche. Mamu di shiche. Ndi obo di shiche. Ndi enyi ndi oku. O ife ndi na na ine mebo. Dika ndi royal family. Ndi nugu aguleri. Naka ingwe shete lazo. Ka ijilie wa ne shete. Adding their voices, Mr. Ifedora Chukuzwa Emmanuel and Mr. Daniel Nyaweluchi described the event as an opportunity for social interaction and bonding among members of the royal family, stressing that every true traditional ruler of Aguleri comes from Omonta royal family. Some of the awardees, Mr. Ike Chuku Anyamumelo, and Mr. Obiora Ndibwe expressed gratitude to their grandparents for honoring them, promised their continuous support. Some of the Omoadas, Mrs. Agnes Onochie and Mrs. Pauline Odinso, expressed satisfaction for the positive impact they have made in their family. <laughs> Different cultural display and presentation of award entertained the people from Aguleri if Nayangwankwa reporting for ABS. Mayors and four governors have been disqualified from last month's election in the Democratic Republic of Congo because of fraud and violence. They are among the 82 candidates excluded from the legislative, provincial and local elections by the electoral body. But his announcement did not address the presidential election that saw President Felish Isakidi re-elected by a landslide. The opposition has called the entire election a sham and demanded a rerun. However, only one of the 19 opposition candidates has gone to the court. The main ones said they have no faith in the courts and have instead called for protests without saying when. The 20th December election was marred by widespread logistical problems. It had to be extended to an unplanned second day in some parts of the vast country. The team won the keenly contested trophy after defeating their counterparts on Mwahe Branch with one goal to Norton. Emmanuel Okonkwo, our correspondent, tells us more. Champions League is an annual football tournament being organized by Professor Paulie Emenike, who has sponsored the league for 40 years now, from 1983 to date. The 2023 cum 2024 Nanka Champions League final, which was held at Nero's Stadium, Nanka, in Urumba North local government area, was kicked off by the president. Nigeria Football Federation, NFF, Mr. Ibrahim Gusa, and attracted spectators from across Anambra State and beyond. Speaking through the Anambra State Chairman, Youth Sports Federation of Nigeria, Engineer Akonam Obiefuna, the sponsor of the league, Professor Eminike said his motivation in sponsoring the tournament for 40 years now 
is his love for the Timmy youths and the community in general and assured that he will still sponsor the game for another 10 years before handing over to younger generation. Professor Paul Emenike has shown capacity, he has shown passion, he has shown love, he has shown so much interest for the betterment of the community. In an interview, the traditional ruler of Nanka community, Igwe Godwin Ezilo, commended Professor Emenike for showing capacity and passion for the improvement of Nanka community, noting that God has used Professor Emenike and other illustrious sons and daughters of Nanka to transform and develop the community. The Nanka monarch, Igwe Zilo, used the opportunity to encourage people of the state and in the Nanka in particular to keep hope alive and work hard. So according to him, this 2024 is a year that many will become billionaires through hard work, even as he asked the youths to abstain from crime and criminality as they do not pay but destroy. For very good 40 years, so many people have been resuscitated again. So many people that are wounded, so many people that are, have already been forgotten on the sickbed. They are now very healthy because of this. Our beloved one, our Mirabu Poly America. For this great thing he has brought to us, God will keep on blessing him for us. Some stakeholders in the community, including the Chief Medical Director of Chukwemeko Odmego Juku University Teaching Hospital, Ama Akwoka, Dr. Joe Akabike, and National Vice President of Ohana SND Worldwide, Chief Damian Oke Kogene, who is also the Chairman, Nero Stadium Management Committee, while appreciating Professor Menike for being a blessing to Nanka community, described football as the best antidote for youth's restiveness and called on government at all levels to invest more in the sports sector in order to get the youths engaged and curb crime and criminality among them for a better society. The owner of Mpo branch of the Nanka FC, Chief Ukudele Ezenwankwo, thanks God for giving his team victory in the tournament, commending the players for bringing out their skills and energy to win the game and prayed God to keep blessing the sponsor of the Nanka Championship League, Professor Emenike from Nero Stadium, Nanka. I am Emmanuel Okonko, reporting for ABS News. Remember, you can follow news and programs on ABS on many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page, follow at Anamba Broadcasting Service. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television or can follow on X at ABS Radio TV and on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. To end the news, a recap of the main point. Governor Saludo is to sign executive order banning sand mining in Oko. More communities have celebrated Cultural Day. Federal government is to employ additional aid workers to improve humanitarian response team. Three ministers for governors have been disqualified in Democratic Republic of Congo election over fraud and violence. To end the news, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has called for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And I end the breakfast news at this time on ABS television. Thanks for watching. I am Priska Wonko. Good morning. <laughs>